Rise ye hope. Just a wee Christmas Eve message. Let's pray. Father, uh, may this lovely truth not just live in our hearts today and tomorrow, but, but be a larger part of our thinking throughout the coming year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this Christmas season, you may have noticed that we've been uh, meditating on why Jesus came. And last Sunday, we saw that it was to offer sinners a free gift, and that is the gift of eternal life. But now notice how John chapter 1, verse 14 and verse 17 describe why Jesus came. They said, the word became flesh and made its dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father. And what did he come laden with? He came from the Father, full of grace and truth. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And until a man or a woman bumps into and is confronted by the law of God, they will have no idea whatsoever of their need, of their chronic need, of the grace of God. Dr. Phil Williams was speaking about this, and he said, the, the law is the light that reveals how dirty the room is. Grace is the only broom that can sweep it clean. Many people, uh, if not most people, if you ask them, they, they think that they're basically a good person. And this is entirely because they don't realize how high the standard of God's law is. But Romans 3.19 says that when an individual bumps into God's law and the Holy Spirit opens their eyes, it says every mouth is silenced and everyone realizes that they are accountable to God. But what do sinners do? Well, they don't want to hear any of this, and so Romans 1.18 tells us that they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. They don't allow God's law to even speak to them. They suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Tommy Bolt was a pro golfer, and uh, this is a true story. He was living in and playing in Los Angeles, and he was given a caddy uh, who had the reputation of being a chatterbug. And so Tommy said, I, I can't deal with this. And he told the guy, he said, you're not allowed to say anything throughout the whole round except for yes or no. Is that clear? So he made that clear. Well, during the round, on one of the holes, his ball fell beneath a tree, uh, and his next shot was one where he would have to hit it over a lake. Well, difficult shot to be sure. So sizing up his shot, he turned to his caddy and he said, uh, uh, this is a five iron, right? Well, his caddy said, no, 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 no way. Well, Tommy, who was already getting upset with his caddy, he says, well, what do you mean? You think I can't hit that over that lake with a, with a five iron? Watch this. So he pulled out a five iron and hit a beautiful shot to within five feet of the pin. Well, still angry with his caddy, he said, so what do you think of that? Okay, you can talk now. And, and he, his caddy said, Mr. Bolt, uh, that was not your ball. <laughs> well, there's a lesson here for us, you see, and that is if, if you don't allow God, God's word to speak to you, if you don't permit his law to confront you, if you turn a deaf ear to it, if, as a believer, you quit being in the Word and quit being regularly under the sound of the Word preached, which God has ordained, you have no idea how many crimes you are committing. As Dr. Williams said, unless God's law daily shines its light on you, you don't know how dirty the room is. Now, what does every other religion say that we should do? Every other religion and every false version of Christianity says you do these few things and that's how you can clean the room. But the Jesus of the Bible says you can't. Only my grace can do that. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And you see, because God saw that we could never keep his law because we're just too sinful, God the Son came to the earth in order to give us the two things that we need. And what are they? Grace and truth. 
We need grace to be forgiven. We need grace for salvation. Ephesians 2.8 says, By grace are you saved through faith. This is not of yourself. It's a gift of God. Not by doing good works unless any man should boast. So first you need the grace that saves you. Then you need the truth that sanctifies you. What does sanctify mean? It means make holy. What does make holy mean? It means to be made like Jesus. And you remember the Lord in Luke 17, 17, he's praying to the Father about us. And he says, Father, sanctify them, make them holy through the truth. Your word is the truth. Now, you and I probably know the story of John Newton. Uh, in the 1740s, he was a slave driver. He was a, a slave trader. And uh, then he heard the gospel, the gospel that God the Son came to the earth, went to the cross, your sins were placed on him. He suffered the punishment you and I should have suffered so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He believed that gospel. He repented of his sins and he gave his life to Christ. But it was another five years of being in the Bible and being under the sound of the preaching of God's word that it dawned on him just how wicked slave trading was. And when that happened, he encouraged a fellow by the name of William Wilberforce, who was a British politician, and encouraged him to continue his war against slavery. And Wilberforce was about to give up. Well, on February the 23rd, 1807, a bill to abolish the slave trade in the British West Indies was carried by the House of Commons 263 to 16, of course, accompanied by a chorus of cheers for Wilberforce. Uh, it became law on March the 25th. And, and you and I both know that uh, John Newton went on to write that great hymn, Amazing Grace. And why did he write it? Because he knew that both he and Wilberforce had experienced a life change, a life change through the grace of God and through the truth of God in the Bible. And this change in them went on to profoundly change the world. The law was given through Moses and grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Let me finish with a, another golf an, an analogy. There's a fellow that most people won't know, but some do, his name's Harvey Pennick. And he was both a golfer and he was both a writer. He was born in 1904, and he wrote a book called Harvey Pennick's Little Red Book, and it became a bestseller. But by the time Pennick was even first showing his notes to another writer, he was 90 years old, and he only showed it to him because he just wanted to know whether the guy thought that the book was even worth publishing. Well, the writer read it that night, and the next evening, left a message with Pennock's wife saying that Simon and Schuster had agreed to an advance of $90,000. The amazing thing is some time passed and the writer didn't hear back from Pennock and eventually said, I've got to know what happened here. He fell off the wagon here. He fell off the cliff and he got a hold of him and finally Pennock came clean. He said, well, look, with all of my medical bills, there's no way I could advance Simon and Schuster $90,000 to, to ha have my book published. Well, you know, astonishingly, it took quite some time, but finally the writer convinced Pennock that the publisher wanted to pay him $90,000, not the other way around. And Pennock wrote, what a joy to realize that instead of needing to pay God an insurmountable bill for sins already committed, God decided instead to give the priceless gift of grace so that I can know the truth that my sins are already paid for and paid in full. That's what we're here for this evening is to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you say, why? because the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Let's pray.
Lord, as we uh, prepare ourselves for the Lord's table, we, uh, we ask that our minds would be filled with precious thoughts of our gratitude for what it is you've done for us and the grace you've, you've, you've given us and the, the, the truth that you've opened our eyes to that we get to be a part of in the coming year. In Jesus' name uh, we pray. Amen.